We've rendered out an image sequence to PNG files, and because Windows can display those thumbnails, I can actually sort of play through as a flipbook and sort of see my animation just in the Windows Explorer. But I want to stitch them together into a movie and send them to someone, so I'm going to use QuickTime Pro for that. And I've got it open here already. Now you can use Maya's F-Check application to preview your animations, but you can't use it to export to another file format. So that's one reason why I like QuickTime Pro. So QuickTime Pro has the ability to open an image sequence. I'll go to File, Open Image Sequence. And I want to choose the first frame of my sequence. And I have to choose the frame rate explicitly here. So Maya renders out at 24 frames per second by default. So that's what my sequence currently is rendered at, 24 FPS. I'll click Open. And all of those frames are now going to get loaded into memory. Here they are. And I can play it through. That looks pretty good. I can even scrub through. This is very convenient. And I can analyze my animation. I'm ready to export this out to an H.264 movie that I could put on the web or send to someone. To do that, I want to go to the File menu and choose Export. Not Save, but Export. Save wouldn't apply a different compression. It would just take those PNG files and stick them all together into one giant PNG file. So I want to use Export because I'm actually going to be converting to a different compressor. The default settings are actually probably pretty good. If you go into the options, you can take a look at them. Compression H.264, so that's the type of compressor. And then you'll see the dimensions are current. We're not changing the size of our frame. If I wanted to, I could go in and tweak around on those settings a little bit. But in fact, that's good enough. But if I needed to, I can go into the settings and adjust them. I don't want to save directly into the same folder here with my PNG sequence, so I'll go up a level and go up one more level in my project folder, and I want to create a folder in here called Movies to store my QuickTime movie. So I'll click the Create New Folder button, and I'll call this Movies, and I'll double-click on that to go in there, and I'm now going to save into that folder. Click Save. So it'll take a moment to think about it. Once it's finished, I can go back to my project folder. And I should now have a movies folder. Here it is. And there's my magic wand. I want to just check the file size on that. Let's see. Only 500 kilobytes, so half a megabyte. I'll double click on it to open it in QuickTime. And you might notice if you compare it to the original sequence that the color has subtly shifted. This is my original sequence, and this is the output after it's been compressed. There is a workaround for this, this lack of contrast here. This is a little bit strange, but you can do this, and uh, there's no harm done. You just go into the Window menu, go to Show Movie Properties. Within here, you'll want to choose the Video Track and choose Visual Settings. And then finally, the little fix for this is to change this transparency. Watch what happens in the view when I do it. I change the transparency to straight alpha, and now I've got my contrast back. Close this window, rewind to make sure I'm on frame zero of my animation, and then save. And now this file will look fine displayed anywhere. That is that. We've done our exercise on particle systems, and we got a beautiful magical fairy dust animation to show for it. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you've learned a lot about particle systems in Maya.